Let's talk about immediate instructions. This is a RISC-V reference card. It's different than the one that I've linked to in my prior videos. I kind of like how this is organized a little better. Uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see these 32-bit instruction formats. And in the prior videos, we've primarily been dealing with the R format, which deals with registers only. Um, but there are a bunch of other formats here, IS, etc. And you'll notice that these all have uh, an acronym IMM, which stands for immediate, embedded, sort of all over the instruction. And these are pieces of the immediate value. Uh, and we're going to talk about each one of these uh, instruction formats in turn because they go into making what this video is going to be about, which is the immediate generator. So we want to be able to, given any of these instruction formats, generate the immediate value. Let's take a look at the immediate I type instruction. Uh, what I did is uh, I took an input instruction, a uh, 32-bit instruction, and then used a splitter and followed the instruction format and just put a label uh, consistent with what was on the format. Let's take a look at an example of an I type instruction. So we're going to do an add operation with an immediate value. This instruction is add I x10 x5 12. And that means add the immediate value 12, which is in this third spot here, to the value in register 5. And then we're going to store the result into register 10. And so note that this 12 is part of the instruction, and it is encoded in this immediate value here in the record. Note that the assembler and assembler can typically deal with decimal values here. These values can also be negative. And they can also deal, I believe, with hexadecimal values. So uh, they and usually hex, hex values are preceded with 0x and then the, the hexadecimal value. So let's take a look at the S variant type then. Uh, again, I've taken the instruction and I've broken the S record type uh, out with the labels uh, corresponding to the values on the reference card. So let's take store word as an example, SW. So we've got a store word, uh, x12, and then the number 8 with x5 in parentheses. So what does that mean? It means store the word contained in register 12 at the memory address calculated by adding 8, this immediate value, to the value that's sitting in register 5. So again, uh, this immediate value 8 is composed of the value stored in the bits here in IMM40 and IMM115. So let's take a look at the B type immediate variant. Uh, this is the variant for branch operations. We've got BEQ, which means branch if equal, uh, an X5, an X6, and a 16. And so this means branch if the values in register 5 and 6 are equal and then branch offset of 16 bytes. So let's take a look at the U-type immediate variant. Uh, this is a, a, an interesting instruction, L-U-I. Um, it means load upper immediate. And it wasn't really clear to me what this was used for when I first looked at it, but uh, I have an example that clarifies it. But let's just look at this example carefully. So LUI, uh, register X10, and then an immediate value. And in this case, I have the immediate value um, specified in hexadecimal. This means load the upper 20 bits with the immediate value, in this case, uh, X, hex 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, placing the value in register 10. And so it seems maybe a little strange why you'd want to load the upper bits uh, in this way and have, an, have a special instruction for it. But it does have a, a, an interesting use. And so down here, I have uh, the, the, the LUI instructions useful for composing a 32-bit far jump address using immediates and two instructions. If, if you think carefully about the other immediate instructions, you'll realize that can't in one instruction yield a full 32-bit address because they're not the immediate values are not 32 bits long, and 
Those other formats, and I'm talking about the I format, for example, those immediate values are sign extended, which means that you know, if you are specifying a two's complement negative number, um, you're going to get that sign extended as a 32-bit value. So there's really no way to easily compose a 32-bit immediate value but for this instruction here, such that you, if, if you wanted to compose the far address specified here, 8765432.1, you can do it with these two instructions, LUI, which takes this immediate value, 87654, loads it into register 10. And so this is the value that you have at register 10 now. And then you add the value stored in register 10 to this hex value, placing the new value back into register 10. And that yields you this 32-bit far address that you can now jump to in, in memory. So let's look at the J immediate variant type. So what we have here is uh, JAL, it means jump and link. Uh, the register X1 and then the value, the decimal value 2048, it means jump to the address with a relative offset of 2048, meaning take the program counter and add 2048 bytes to it. Storing the return address which in this case is the program counter plus four, because that's where we would return back to once we're done jumping, and store it in register one, which is this register specified here. So let's take all of those splitters and build an immediate generator. So for an immediate generator, the input is going to be the instruction, 32 bits wide, And then in order to know what kind of record type we are dealing with, um, we are going to need to be told that. So I will input a selector. Uh, the selector will need to be uh, three bits wide, and that'll become apparent in a minute why. And uh, I'll just call it cell for selector. And then the output is simply going to be the immediate value. So let's stick that over here. It'll need to be 32 bits wide. And let's call it um, IMM310, kind of in keeping with how I was labeling the other immediate values. And let's point it the right direction. And then as I always like to do, let's put tunnels on these. Okay, let's deal with the I type instruction first. And then the only immediate uh, piece of the immediate value is in this one uh, field right here. And so you might think, oh, well, we can just output that and you know, convert that to 32 bits. Well, you need to sign extend any of the immediate values here. So what we need is to add a sign extender here with the uh, input being 12 bits and the output, of course, being 32 bits. Okay, let's uh, wire up the S-splitter. So again, it takes the instruction. And now you see that the uh, S-splitter has the immediate value sort of broken up into two pieces. You got four zero and uh, 11 five here. So let's add a splitter in reverse to combine these two values together. So 
So we're going to need a fan out of 2, and we're going to need, again, 12 bits because those two immediate values are combined uh, for a length of 12 bits wide. And the top five bits need to be grouped together. So one, so bits, so zero, one, two, three, and four. And then bit five will belong to the other group. And then they're just simply wired like so. Now, again, uh, this, these 12 bits, the, the values that can be here are sign extended values that can be positive and negative values on, the, on an S type. So uh, we need another sign extension. And in fact, we can just copy this and paste that there like so. Now, this is a more complicated one. You can see the immediate value is sort of broken up across the instruction. So let's create a splitter that can combine them. It's going to need a fan out of 5. Now, this the, the B splitter, uh, the zeroth bit of the splitter, is basically always low because it, it's always dealing, the uh, immediate value is always giving you even values of, of uh, bytes. So. We're going to make the fan out 5, and we're going to make the bit 0 uh, be by itself. And so then um, immediate values um, 1 to 4. So group number 1 and so 5 to 10 will be the second group. And then um, 11 is by itself, actually bit 0, if I can get this right, that's bit 0. And then immediate 11 should be in group 3, and immediate 12 should be in group 4. Okay, I think I finally got that right. I'm going to go ahead and put tunnels on all of these immediates. Okay, and now it makes it easier to wire up this splitter. So remember, uh, bit zero is always going to be ground because we're dealing with even numbers of bytes with this immediate value. So let's go ahead and add the ground. Very well. Okay, so now uh, the other thing then to note is that the B splitter type, the, uh, the value that you get from the immediate value of the B type is also supposed to be sign extended to 32 bits. So we will add another sign extension here. This though, of course, will now be 13 bits in width input, 32 out. And um, yeah, so I actually realized I have all of these um, tunnels named the same, and that is and that is not correct. So this should actually be um, let's just call this I out T because that's the I type. We'll call this um, S out T, and then of course B out. Okay, let's do the let's do the J type next. There we go. Wire up the instruction, and uh, this process is very similar to the B splitter. So I will just put some tunnels in here. Okay, so and so the process here is uh, similar as well. So we need a fan out of what uh, is so it's the J I believe this J instruction also specifies even numbers of bytes and we're going to need to build this immediate value in terms of um, 21 bits even though only 20 bits are encoded in the instruction that uh, zeroth bit again is um, always considered zero because we're dealing in even number of 
bytes. So we need a fan out of one, two, three, four, five. And we, uh, again, are going to need 21 bits. Bit zero being in group zero by itself, and then bit one being from one to 10 here. So this will be in group one. All the way up to 10. And then 11 is by itself, so that'll be in group 2. And then 12 through 19 will be in group 3. And then Group four will be 20 by itself. Yes, I think that is all correct. So again, we'll tie pin zero to ground. And again, this is a positive or negative number, so we sign extend this. And then finally, we have the U instruction. So we'll wire up the instruction. And then this one's pretty straightforward. Um, all we really need to do is uh, create a splitter here that in, that in this case is 32 bits wide, a fan out of two, and then uh, we need 12 through 31 to be assigned to one group. So we'll assign bit zero through bit 11 to be group zero, and then group 12 on to be group 1. So in this case, this just maps directly, so I'm not even going to use a tunnel. And then 11 to 0 is all tied to ground. Because in this case, this is uh, an upper load, an upper immediate load in type of instruction, which um, means that we're not even going to be doing sign extension here. We're basically just going to take the value that's destined for the immediate uh, value, and we're going to stick it in the upper bits. So no sign extension here. So how are we going to route them to the output of the module? Well, we will use a multiplexer. And it will need to be 32 data bits. And data bit wise, we'll have a selector of three bits. The output, of course, will be the output value of the module, our immediate value, which is what we're trying to build in the first place. And then the inputs will be the inputs in specified uh, in this order. And uh, the order is actually not particularly, it doesn't really matter insofar as it needs to match the control logic which I'll be built which I will be building in a later video but you know as long as your control logic and the order of your outputs match then these can be in any order you like and then finally we will need the selector wired up to the select input
Okay, let's test this. So I took all of the instructions that I had went through earlier in the video across all of these splitters, and I typed them into an online RISC-V assembler. This assembler is linked in the video description. Allowed me to just put all of the instructions, these should look familiar, uh, in here, and then I hit the build button, and down here in the uh, hex dump, I actually get the machine language. What I'm going to do then is we're going to take the uh, add i instruction and we'll type it in here. This was this instruction was add i x10 x5 12. So the immediate value is, is 12. So that instruction is uh, 00c 28513 and the i the i selector should be zero. So we should see 12 here and hex C is indeed 12. So that one checks out. So the next one is the store word instruction. Store word x12, eight offset uh, for the value in x5. So um, that instruction then should be 00C2 A423. And the uh, S type for storing words is uh, a selector of one. So that is this bit here. And so we should see uh, an offset of eight because that indeed was, uh, if I flip back over here, as you can see, eight is the offset for the, for the store word instruction right there. All right, so let's do the next one. So the next one is the uh, load upper. So that is so we're so the instruction is eight seven six five four five three seven, and uh, that is a upper. That is a U type. So that is zero one two three four. So that should be a selector of four, which is like that. And so, yes, we should see, because of a load upper immediate, we should see the 87654 in the upper bits of the immediate value. So, great, that is working as expected. So now let's try the JAL instruction. That is, uh, that is this one right here. So JAL X1 2048. So that is 7F4. Zero zero zero, E F, and then uh, that's the jump. So that should be zero one two three. So that should be like this. And I have red here. Why is there red? Oh, I see. So I have two tunnels being driven by an output with the same name. Uh, and so that is obviously wrong. So um, this, uh, let me go back to the design. Uh, change this name to just simply um, B. And then here I'll put a B in front of it. And then uh, I'll just rename this one to J, even though I really technically don't need to. And probably I should name all of these uh, consistently. But I think that should be fine. Okay, so this should be 2048, I believe. Let's change this to decimal to make this easier. And that is definitely not correct. 2036. So what is up with that? Actually, it's more than a few moments later. I spent a couple of days noodling over this off and on and uh, thought I had the online, I thought I had a buggy online assembler, quite frankly, because I looked at my logic and I couldn't find a problem with it uh, until I uh, read the manual. This is the RISC-V instruction set manual. Again, the uh, link to it's in the comments. And um, in particular, got the unconditional jump paragraph here describing the jump and link instruction uses a J-type format, which we know, where the J-immediate 
encodes a signed offset in multiples of two, which again we know. The offset is sign extended. Again, we know that. I did that. And added to the address, the address of the jump instruction to form the jump target address. Okay, so the jump target address in this case is 2048. So that's the absolute address in memory that we're trying to get to. So what this is saying is, what is it that you need to add to the current jump instruction address? And what is the current instruction jump instruction address? Well, if you go down here, based on what the assembler did, the current jump instruction address is at C, which is 12. So what do you need to add to 12 to get to 2048? Well, guess what? You need to add 2036 to it. So as it turns out, this uh, entire thing uh, was, was correct. <laughs> so uh, now uh, let's go ahead and test then the, uh, what is left to test after all of that? Uh, we need to test, oh, this BEQ instruction. So BEQ X5, X6, 16. So that should be this thing down here. And that's a branch, so that should be 0, 1, so that should be 2, like this. And I get an immediate value of 8, which given that the uh, immediate uh, address of, of, of 16, or the immediate value of 16 is showing here, um, that might seem incorrect, but again, it is not incorrect. Because what's going on here, and if we go look at this disassembled code here, uh, what you see here is branch if not equal, and then it renamed T0, T1, because I, you know, because again, these are the uh, ABI conventions. They, they translate to X5 and X6, so ignore that. Um, but what you see is boot plus hex 18. Now, why does that make sense? Well, what makes sense is if branching is equal, go to the next instruction. Well, what is the next instruction? Well, it would be the instruction after this instruction. And we'll come back to this J here in a second. So it would basically be um, hex 18, which is boot plus 18 because boot is sitting at zero. So what is it that would get you from here to hex 18? Well, it's going to be eight because you need to jump to this instruction and then you need to jump one more to get to this uh, fake instruction that doesn't exist. So eight in this case makes perfect sense. Thus, this is correct. Now, why is this jump instruction here given that I didn't code one. Well, that's, that is the jump instruction that actually transfers you to the location that you gave right here, location 16. So why does this jump 10 make sense? Well, this is actually hex 10, which translates to 16, and it's boot plus 16 because boot is zero, so the absolute memory address is uh, hex 16, which if we put this number in here, hex 16 should actually be this instruction. So I'm expecting this number right here to back me up four. So let's type in FFD, FF, FFD, FF, 06F. Now this is a jump instruction, not a branch, so I have to get that, I have to get the selector right. The jump instruction is zero, one, two, three, so that's this, and look at that, minus four. So I am calling this immediate generator complete, and uh, I don't know about you, but I definitely learned a lot about these instructions. Thanks for watching.